What's up everybody, welcome back to the shop. And this week, I would like to take some time to play with a new toy that I bought myself over the holidays, but just haven't had time to show off yet. And that would be this 80 watt laser cutter. Now, this is an import from China that I bought on eBay, and so far, I am very impressed. I will make an entirely separate video about the specs and performance of this laser cutter, but first, there's a problem we have to solve. See, this laser cutter doesn't have integrated cooling. It has a water jacket around the laser tube, which is a start, but you still need to supply your own water chiller. There are commercial solutions for this, but they seem kind of expensive for what they are, and on the low end, it seems like you can have some serious trouble with quality control. And perhaps worst of all, none of them are anywhere near as sexy as some of the custom PC water cooling loops that I've seen online. So I propose we build our own water chiller using off-the-shelf PC cooling components and things we can buy at the hardware store. I ended up buying a bunch of hardware from Amazon for this build. I'll go ahead and put links in the description for everything that I ended up using. Obviously none of this hardware is sponsored, but just in case you're curious, you can go check out those links. The first thing I want to do is take all of the major components of this project and start laying them out on the table. I'm going to stack them, play with them, move them around, and see if I can figure out how I want this to go together in the end. The main thing I'm thinking about is how I'm going to actually run all of the tubing so that I have to make the fewest bends possible. Okay, let's take a quick break and talk about the theory behind liquid cooling. The main advantage of liquid cooling is that it allows you to take all of the cooling components, the fans, the heat sinks, and move it away from the component to be cooled. Every liquid cooling loop is going to have the same basic components. You start with a water block, or in our case, a water jacket. Secondly, you need something to move the coolant around, so some sort of pump. Third, you need a radiator. Sometimes you can get away with just having a radiator with a large heat sink, but in most cases, attached to the radiator, you're going to have some sort of fan. The way that this works is that heat conducts through the wall of the water block into the coolant, and that heat is carried by the coolant through the pump and then into the radiator. Now a radiator is basically a big convoluted pipe with some fins attached to it that help dissipate that heat from the coolant. So as air moves through those fins, it picks up that heat and takes it away. A fan helps expedite that process so that now all of the heat that was picked up in the water block is put into the air by the radiator and the coolant is now back to the temperature hopefully that it started at and then it enters the water block to pick up more heat. These pipes can be as long as you need them to be, so this component can be buried deep inside of a machine somewhere while the pump, the fan, and the radiators can be outside. Now, for practical reasons, these systems usually benefit from having a reservoir of coolant. Now, this reservoir allows for a few things. First of all, it acts as thermal ballast in the system, which keeps it from responding too quickly to transient heat spikes in the water block. Second of all, it allows you to fill and drain the system more easily. And then finally, it allows the air that might be trapped in the system to get out of circulation while still allowing the system as a whole to be closed to outside contamination. Now I can bolt my fans to the radiator, making sure they're oriented correctly not just for airflow, but also for where I want the wiring to end up. And of course for this project, I built two. The next step is to add fittings for both soft and rigid tubing. So I need to pull these plugs out of here, and then this radiator gets one compression fitting for rigid tubing and one hose barb for soft tubing. The other radiator is just going to get two compression fittings, both for rigid tubing. Now we can measure and cut the first piece of rigid tubing for the project. Here we go. Okay, so this is not going to cut this. This is designed for a softer type of tubing made out of PETG, whereas this, I'm not sure, but as far as I can tell, is acrylic, 
which means it's much harder and much more brittle. If you try to cut this using this, it's gonna crack. We're gonna have to saw this. Now, luckily I have an X-Acto razor saw, which is the perfect tool for this. I'm gonna go grab that and we'll run our rigid line. When you're cutting rigid tubing like this, you want to make sure to clean up the edges with some sandpaper and then bevel them so that they don't tear up the O-rings when you're trying to insert them into the rig. Now I'm going to go ahead and throw some hardware on here, and then you can jam them into the compression fittings and tighten them down. That's a nice secure connection. Now we need to add some hardware to our thermal take temperature and flow meter. This allows us to monitor the temperature and flow, and also set alarms for high temperature or low flow. Again, throwing some hardware on there, and then we can jam that on and tighten it down. And we're coming up on the first bend of the build. So we'll get our heat gun out and our bending jig. Hey, not bad. Okay, before we continue, I think it's time to do a quick survey of all the ways that you can mess this up. Now, luckily for this video, I think that I've screwed up once in every possible way in my five attempts from my first to the one that I'm gonna keep. The first one, you'll notice that the uh, piece of silicone is still inside. That is because I overheated this with the silicone in it, softened it too much, and when I went to pull it out, it broke right in the crook of the bend. This one is also flattened against the desk. I got it just way too hot, and when I went to bend it with the bending jig, it just flattened it right there. This one was my second attempt. Ironically, it's beautiful. It is an absolutely textbook example of how to do these bends. Uh, they all have a pretty constant diameter all the way through. They are minimally wrinkled. You can just barely see in the light that there's a, maybe a slight wrinkle in it. Um, the only downside to this one is it's bent the wrong way. And because this is a compound bend, uh, there is a wrong way. There's no way that I can put this where I need to put it. Uh, there's no direction I can flip it that will make it right. Um, it is, uh, the chirality is wrong. Next attempt, the 90 went perfectly. When I went to do the 45, I just got it way, way, way too hot and just put all these little bubbles in the plastic. You don't want that because it weakens the tubing and also it just looks ugly. Now this one, I was a little gun shy from the overheating attempt and I underheated it. It did survive the bend, but it put a big wrinkle on the inside of the bend and that results in a lot of stretching on the outside of the bend. Instead of the plastic moving around the tubing the way it needs to, you end up with a really thin wall on the outside. And when I went to remove the rubber hose from inside of this, it actually just broke right at this thin section of the tubing. Now this is the piece I'm going to try to use. This has a good 90 degree bend in it, and it has approximately a 45 degree bend in it here. There is a little bit of bubbling in the wall right here where it was facing the heat gun and it got a little too warm. I'm hoping I can get away with that. It doesn't look too bad. I've already shortened the ends here and beveled them, so we're going to try to put this in the rig. As much trouble as it was to make this bend, I was a little bit worried about cracking it trying to get it in place. But once I got the hardware on and tightened down the compression fittings, everything felt pretty sturdy. So my next move was to bolt everything down to some sort of back plate that I could mount on the wall. Luckily I had this piece of half inch plywood laying around. This pump is sold as a solar circulation pump, but it runs at 12 volts and the specs are pretty much perfect for this project, so I gave it a shot. Everything's going to be powered by this PC power supply that I pulled from an old electronics surplus a couple years ago. And a terminal strip will help with the wiring. I'm marking all the mounting holes with a long nose marker so that I can make myself some room to work and still remember where everything goes afterwards. Some short wood screws will hold everything to the back plate.
and now we can wire everything up. I mounted the whole rig on the wall above the laser cutter using some drywall anchors, and then I could start hooking up the actual plumbing. I used soft tubing to connect it to the laser tube's water jacket and secured them with some standard hose clamps. I filled up the system with distilled water, and once I was pretty sure that there weren't any leaks, I added some system prep. This is a biocide intended to inhibit mold and bacteria growth in the loop, and you need to let it run for about 24 hours, so I let it go overnight and I kept an eye on it just to make sure we didn't have any sort of catastrophic failure. The next day I inspected the system and I wasn't able to find any leaks, so I went about draining all of the distilled water and biocide mixture to make room for our coolant. For coolant we'll be using this pre-mixed Coolant's High Performance Liquid Coolant in UV Blue. I chose UV Blue because it reminds me of the blue football milk that we call Gatorade, and I want my laser tube to feel like strong, wild garbage. Once I was confident that I'd gotten all of the air bubbles out of the system, I went ahead and filled up the reservoir above the fill tube to make sure that when I turned it off, it wouldn't backflow air into one of the radiators. Thank you all so much for hanging out today. It was a super fun build and I'm already looking forward to the next one. I know it's cliched, but if you like what you saw, it does really help me out if you like and subscribe. And if you're interested in supporting me, the shop, and all of the super talented people who hang out here, you can go check out our Patreon at patreon.com signaldish. Till next time, go make something.